guys. Welcome to my ant room slash pet room. It's basically a room in my home dedicated to all my pet ant colonies, as well as exotic pets. For those of you who follow this channel, I have some updates to show you on some of my ant colonies and pets. But sadly, I do have some unfortunate death reports to share with you. There was a lot that happened over the past few weeks, and there are some really unexpected things I have to admit that happened. Today I'll also do a couple feedings for you guys, so you can see some of the ants in action. So AC family, let's get right to it. This here is Volcania, the home to my pet fire ant colony. In a recent video, I fed them a raw chicken foot for the very first time, and well, they loved it. So I've resorted to simply feeding them raw chicken feet now. Have a look at them. They totally consume all the meat and reduce the feet to their bones. This is just fire ants doing what they do in nature. And the bones make the setup look cool. I'm actually leaving the bones in their place just to keep track of how many they've had. So far they've had four and will be having their fourth chicken foot today. They go through chicken feet like crazy, finishing a whole foot in two to three days. But guys, below the waters, I have some deaths to report. Have a look. No more fish. They've all died. Not much moss. All gone. And as for the crayfish that used to live here, it's still alive. If you're new, this is the resident crayfish that lives in the waters, whose aim is to feed on the little bits of food edibles that the fire ants drop into the water. It looks like he ate all the fish, as we thought he might do. But interestingly enough, he hasn't been able to eat the shrimp, who also feed on edibles within the waters, helping keeping them clean. The snail that was also placed in here is also alive and doing well. Though I don't know where he is currently, as he just pops up here and there every now and then. Guess these waters are ruled by the invertebrates, but together, they make a perfect cleanup crew to ensure the waters of Volcania remain clean for the fire ants who drink from the waters. Now moving on to my weaver ant queen, who is expecting workers any day now. I saw a hole, but strangely, I never saw any ants emerging from it. I suspected the queen and her starting young might be dead. I grabbed the leaf and began to open the chamber. And sadly, guys, I'm sorry. She also passed away, mites feeding on her decaying body. I'm not sure what caused her death, but as we ant keepers always understand, death is always part of the hobby. Not all queen ants make it in the wild for various reasons. She could have died from disease, poor genetics, poor conditions where she chose to nest. I don't know, but she's yet another death I discovered this week. Moving on to the Jungle Gym, a tropical floating island on which I placed our unidentified acrobat ants, which may actually be a brand new undiscovered species we may have discovered on the channel. Still waiting from the scientists on news for that. But they eventually moved out of the test tube they were initially living in when I transported them to the island. I discovered it empty one day, which means they had moved out somewhere. In the wild, they live in carved out tunnels within wood, so I assumed they had created a nest somewhere in the wood. I do see the ants around, and the colony has definitely been growing in size. They now use the test tube as a water source, and always gather around it in the mornings, like older ladies chatting over coffee at a cafe. But guys, I want to show you something really neat that I didn't expect. Have a look at these! Do you guys know what this mass of white fuzz is?
They are actually a colony of plant insects. I believe some kind of weird mealybug or something. They are all over the trees of the island, and they feed on the sap of the tree. But what's interesting is that I believe the ants are actually drinking honeydew from these plant insects, sweet secretions the plant insects excrete that most ants love. So these plant insects are essentially like the ants' cows. You can see the ant milking a mealybug here. That must be tasty. Isn't that cool? The ants strategically check every mealybug for the ones that are ready to squirt the sweet stuff, which must be super nutritious too. But it's cool to think that the tree on which the ants live feed the mealybugs, which go on to feed the ants. What a cool food chain, right? In addition to the honeydew, the ants feed on small crushed roaches I feed them for protein. They gather around excitedly over the prey to feed. I love watching them convene to deal with prey. I almost see them discussing. Okay, ladies, let's bring home the roach bacon. We can either feed on sight, or who votes to bring the entire roach back to the nest whole? Rays of gasters, please. Now, speaking of the nest, I actually don't know where they're nesting. I looked closely to follow their trail to and from food. I noticed the ants running down here onto this plant and then onto this wood traveling somewhere down there into a place I can't get my camera lens into. So my guess is they are nesting in some unforeseen crack or cavern in the wood. I'm just happy the ants seem to be doing well, because as a potentially undiscovered ant species, caring for these ants and learning about them is of utmost scientific importance. Love being at the forefront of science, don't you guys? All right, moving on to my colony of trap jaw ants. Let's feed them now, giving them a chopped up roach. Watch them emerge. I love seeing the ants come out at feeding time as they snap their jaws shut rapidly and with such great force that it thrusts them backwards. Those jaws are some of the fastest and most powerful appendages in the insect world. Watching them feed is when I can truly appreciate how successful the colony has become. All right, moving on to the Blades of Midas. This colony must be over a year old now, perhaps going on two, and they're still going strong. The colony eats well, and they still reside in their debris nests, glued together using silk from their larvae. Not a lot to report on this super colony, other than the fact that they're still big and active. Okay guys, now it's time for something new. Beside the Blades of Midas' setup is a large cage home to a new pet that you may or may not have seen before. Can you guess what lives here? Well, it's nocturnal, so it's currently asleep in this pouch. Let's open the door and meet our newest addition to the ant room. And no, it's not a giant queen ant that likes pouches. It's this. Peeking its cute head from within the pouch is Sugar, a sugar glider. Come, Sugar. Here's a superworm for you. He grabs the superworm and retreats back to the comfort of his pouch to feed on the superworm. Sugar here was adopted from a friend who couldn't keep him anymore. He is two years old and had a wife sugar glider who sadly passed away. These animals live in social groups in the wild, so typically need a companion. So I've ordered a female to be his new wife coming this week. He's a marsupial like kangaroos and koalas, native to Australia and Indonesia. But he, of course, is captive bred and not wild caught. They have this membrane of skin that allows them to glide in the air. They're so cute. But do your research before you get one. 
They're nighttime animals, so you need to be up at night. They smell, their diet is hard to prepare, and they are scary if you aren't used to taming these kinds of animals, and will bite if given the chance during the taming process. Anyway, perhaps I'll do a dedicated video on Suga, if you guys want one on this channel. Let's let him sleep now. Alright, and now for the dragon's den tank. Home to the Leviathans. I'm so sorry to announce, guys, that these beloved ants have nothing new to report. That's why I haven't done a video on them in a while. They also have been converting to eating raw chicken feet, seeing as their demands for protein is so great now. It's crazy. They also go through one of these huge test tubes full of sugar water in four days. Time to change this one. They also love to eat their sweet jelly. In terms of my smaller ant colonies, I've gone over them in my recent videos, but our species 555 colony is doing really well. I think I may do a full video on them next week, when I transport them to a new setup, as they are just about ready for a home upgrade. I'm unsure what home I should give them though. Any suggestions? Terrarium? AC ant farm? Something else? Let me know. I have several starting carpenter ants, including this awesome orange and black species. They're doing amazing and are eating so well. I have black crazy ants that I trapped, still living in the basement of our Dracula ants. Both colonies are doing well also. And finally, some news on my starting termite colony. I'm afraid they are no longer with us. Here in the ant room, I've placed them in an air-conditioned room in my bedroom, and they are loving the cooler temperatures and doing so well. I don't want to make the same mistake I did with my termites last year by keeping them in my hot ant room, as it would surely kill them. I can't wait for the adult workers to start foraging for spores and materials so they can build their iconic fungus combs. I have the spores ready in my fridge for when that happens. I also have a horned frog, Jabba the Hutt, who is fat and just sits there, a green tree python, and a tarantula, given to me by my friend Exotic Slayer. And so guys, this is the full tour of my ant room and updates on my animals. I'm always sad to report ant and or animal deaths, but again, it's simply all part of the experience that comes with caring for life, regardless of how well you think you may be caring for the insects or animals. But in times like this, I always try to rejoice in the winds, appreciating the successful ant colonies and enjoying the newcomers, learning as much as I can along the way. For me, whether an animal thrives under your care or passes away, you still learn something that can make you a better keeper in the future. And that to me is always a win. Thank you guys so much for watching today's Ant Room Update episode. I hope you learned something new and be sure to subscribe to the channel to be part of this ongoing journey of discovery with me here in the Ant Room. It's Ant Love forever.